All right, so this is another example in chapter nine where we have an angled bar, um, and it's, I guess from your perspective, it's this way. Um, and it's similar in a sense to the chicken in a windstorm problem. Uh, so the first thing that we wanna do, as with all problems, is to draw a picture. But one thing that I wanna point out before um, the problem goes all small in the corner is that if we look at the units in this problem, all of the forces are given in pounds and all of the distances are given in feet. That is a consistent set of units that um, we use here in the US. It's the imperial system of units. And so if forces are in pounds, so LB, and distances are in feet, FT, then we are able to talk about torques in units of foot-pounds. And so that unit is one that um, some of you may be familiar with um, from different, from different real-world uses. And for this problem, we are going to use this system of units so that we don't have to convert everything into standard units um, and then come back because we are asked to find the forces in pounds. So we can stay in this system of units as long as everything matches and everything is consistent. Um, that's not going to happen that often in our problems, but it's something I want us to be aware of. And that's pretty much the main point of this example. But we'll see the same process play out as always. So we have a ladder with a person standing on it. And uh, we have some distances here. We don't have angles, but what we are going to see is that because we have the distances we need, we won't have to write down angles. So we're gonna see that um, as we go along. But we have our simple little picture here. Now we need to think of the forces. So the free body diagram, the forces acting on the ladder. The ladder is our object of reference. As with all free body diagrams, we just kind of have all the um, arrows coming from a point. The first thing that we can do is at least work with the numbers that were specifically given to us. We are told about a 160 pound person. So that is the force of gravity of the person. And that is 160 pounds. Okay. And the ladder has a weight of 10 pounds. So FG of the ladder is 10 pounds. We aren't given in words or numbers any other forces, but now we can start to think about what is happening to this ladder. Over here, it is in contact with the wall, which means the wall is pushing against um, the ladder in what we can think of as a normal force, but to be really clear with ourselves, I'm gonna call it F wall. It is the normal force, the surface force from the wall pointing directly to the left. We also have here um, that the ladder is on the ground and in contact with the ground, which means there is a normal force from the ground, but I'm gonna call that F ground. Like I said, it is a normal force, but to make sure that we don't get confused with two things that are both labeled Fn, the normal force from the wall, I'm gonna call force of the wall, and the normal force from the ground, I'm gonna call force of the ground. Now we're told that the wall is frictionless because even if there is some friction, it's not gonna be a big um, force acting here. But we are not told that the floor is frictionless because think about what would happen if there was no friction on the floor, if this were icy. The ladder would slide out and the person would um, be in trouble. So there is a force of friction preventing that ladder from sliding. And so there's a force of friction, so friction acting at the ground. And so those are all of the forces in our problem. Now, before we even uh, 
abandon this free body diagram, one thing I'm going to point out is already we know what the ground force is going to be because if we look at the net forces in the y direction, that's one of our um, that's one of our uh, conditions for equilibrium. These two forces downwards are balanced by that force of um, the ground up. So F ground minus 160 minus 10 is equal to zero, which means that that ground force is equal to 170 newtons. Uh, pounds, pounds. I'm so used to newtons. Okay. So that one is done. We now have to find, so that we have an, a number four, these two we have a number four. We need to find the force of the wall and the force of friction. Okay, so we're gonna draw a torque diagram as usual. So torque diagram. We have an angle ladder and we can put our axis anywhere but if we look, the friction and the wall are our two unknown forces. Those would be the best places to put um, the axis. And so because if we're picturing what would happen to the ladder, it's easier for us to picture the ladder uh, falling over or um, falling the other direction as it is to kind of imagine it going into the air. So I'm going to go ahead and put the axis at the ground. But it's worth noting that it is just as solvable and just as mathematically sound to put the axis um, at the other end of the ladder. Okay, so if we go along the ladder, both of these two um, forces, they are both acting at the same spot. If this person walks to a different point on the ladder, we have to include two separate arrows and two separate distances. But we're going to save ourselves a little bit of time by recognizing that because they are acting in exactly the same spot and pointing in exactly the same direction, all 170 pounds is a certain distance away horizontally. Up and down force means we need a side-to-side -side, um, distance. And it's halfway between the... Um, foot point of the ladder and the wall. If we look at the slide, the full distance here is six feet. Halfway sideways would just be three feet. There's no fancy tricky um, trigonometry to have to do. It's halfway for the horizontal piece. And then we keep going. The ground and friction are both at the axis, so we ignore um, them. But the force of the wall is over here at the e other end. And because it is a horizontal force, we need a vertical distance. And very conveniently in this problem, we are given that horizontal distance of 8 feet. So that is our torque diagram. We have the wall force, sideways force, a x force, means a vertical distance or a y distance. For the weight of both the person and the ladder, because they're acting in the same spot, that is a vertical force, a y force, and so we need a horizontal distance, an x distance. And then for the torques, if somehow the wall were able to extra push, it would cause that um, ladder to go um, in a counterclockwise direction, counterclockwise, as it swings away from the wall. If the wall suddenly magically disappeared, then this whole ladder would rotate clockwise, and so that torque is clockwise. So if we look at torques clockwise, equal torques counterclockwise as usual, then what we will get is that the, um, uh, the 170 pounds times three feet is equal to the unknown force from the wall times eight feet. So we divide both sides by eight feet. And so we get 170 times three divided by eight. So we get 63.75, 63.75 Newtons. So the force of the wall and I did it again. Maybe you were telling your, um, your screen, no, Dr. Wolsey, it's in pounds. 
If so, good job. It's in pounds. I'm so used to the standard units. It's worth noting um, that the feet on the top and on the bottom cancel. Pounds is the unit that's here. So we can look at the units that we've written down if we're writing them all. And I don't normally, but for these weird units, to try to help myself not make the mistake that I made anyway, um, I wrote them down. But that's where we can double check that that's where that pound unit is coming from. It's because that's what it needs to be to be consistent. And then um, the last step here is to note that the net force is in the x direction have to add up to zero. So the wall force minus friction equals zero. And so it is also equal to 63.75. Friction is, I mean. And pounds, I didn't even say the word Newton, pounds. 63.75 pounds. So for this example, um, it is similar in structure, most similar in structure to the chicken in a windstorm problem. Um, the big point of having this be an additional example that we have a full video for is the fact that we can use this set of units as long as we're consistent and don't make the mistake I made twice in this video um, of making sure that we write down the appropriate unit for force at the end of all this. So we have found all of the forces on the ladder, one, two, three, four, five, and I will see you in the next and final example video for chapter nine. Bye for now.